Hello everyone, it's Richard Kainiso here with a new video regarding the upcoming Anniversary Jubilee event, where Elder Scrolls Online turns 10 years old. The event is not officially announced yet, anyhow, as you can prepare some things before the event starts, I'm already onto it. As the Jester's Festival event is officially announced, though, we at least know the exact date where Anniversary will start, and we already got quite some information about the event in the PTS patch notes. So let's take a look. First off, Jester's Festival starts at March 28th and runs until the April 4th, so only one single week. It's such a short event and bringing just one new style that I will not talk about it much. Anyhow, you can check the link in the description for more information on the event. Unusually, the event ends on a Thursday, which is normally not the case. Usually bigger events in ESO start Thursdays and end on a Tuesday. From last year's experiences, we can be almost completely sure the anniversary event will start directly after Jester's event ends, so at the 4th of April. So let's hop onto the PTS page. First of all, the 10th Jubilee of the game is something special, and Zenimax will reward the players and make uh, this one a really special Jubilee event. There is again the 100% XP passive uh, bonus, same as during Jesters, by the way. As well, you can get three event tickets daily by summoning the 2024 Cake Memento. As usual, any daily quest will uh, give uh, one Anniversary Jubilee uh, gift box, which players will hunt a lot during these events, as it will contain a lot of great items, as you can see here. This year, a new style, um, the Earthbone Allied Armor style, can be found as well during in these boxes. Further, this year will be a Gold Glories box uh, on the first box uh, you earn to dropping, guaranteeing you a fragment of the new Jubilee Steed mount. And from PTS testing, um, we saw that you need around 25 of these shards to put the Steed together, possibly just dropping one fragment each day too, which is not confirmed yet though. But this is in line with them saying that the event will run for an extended period this year, so I guess around three weeks actually, and that you might need to spend some event tickets for fragments too. The very big thing um, next uh, to the prolongation of the event is um, that uh, the, you will not only get um, the anniversary boxes on daily quests, but also on normal in-game activities will reward you with such a jubilee box. So killing a final dungeon, trial, or world boss, uh, doing dolmens or similar, even tales of tribute and uh, rewards of the worthy, so even play PvP players will be stacked with boxes. This change next to the extension will lead to a lot, lot more boxes being looted than in the previous years. This again will lead to a lot uh, market price crashes of the things dropping in these boxes, which I will come to later. This is not all yet though. Uh, Cinemax put as well five new style pages to find during the event. These are very special and the first one is the True Flame Sword replica from any fishing note um, with an extremely small chance. Second, any Dolmen reward chest can drop the Staff of Worms replica. And third, the World Boss and Wadenfell have a chance to drop either the Sonora replica or the Barbas Wolf Helmet replica style page. And lastly, any Geysir in Somerset has a chance to drop a style page for the Ulvers stuff. So, from the Impresario, you can buy pages of the Earthbone Allied style and new fragments of the Morphs, but not the just mentioned special style pages. So that's basically the information um, we have. Um, let's put some more PTS text, uh, testing experiences and market analysis to the table, so we know how to profit best from the anniversary this year. PTS testing showed that not only the new style page, but as well the steed fragments and the five new special style pages were all bound, so not tradable. This would be really rough for players, as the five special style pages seem to be really extremely rare and tough to find. So you would need to spend a lot of time farming instead of simply buying the style if you have the gold. As well, on the other side, um, it cuts off the possibility for farmers to sell uh, the styles for a good chunk of gold. 
I personally still hope that they will change this when the event goes live. At the moment I would actually give it a slightly higher chance that they will actually change it, make all of these free to trade, rather than keeping everything bound. It's just stupid to keep it bound and the complaints will be massive. If they will be tradable, I expect the horse fragments to be popular and expensive in the first week, especially sold in bigger stacks, and the five special style pages to reach huge prices too if they are really as rare as it looked on PTS. So next off, how to maximize getting a lot of boxes quickly. The easiest thing is by simply doing daily crafting rids, as in the last years, where you can do seven daily rids per character, meaning you, you gain seven boxes within like two to three minutes. So I'd really emphasize for everybody to do these craft rids on as many characters as possible on a daily basis. With trendy characters, it would mean 140 boxes daily. For people not knowing where to st start these crafting rids, you can simply go to Daggerfall, Volkergaard or Davan's Watch, depending which alliance your character belongs to. And within the mages or fighter guilds, you will find NPCs who give you the starter quest for daily crafting rids. The last one regarding jewelry crafting, you will find an Alinor. Once you finish the starter's quest, you will find the daily craft rids on boards in bigger cities as for example Vivek or Elden Root. The Ritz anyway grant you a great money and gold materials on a daily basis, so it's completely worth investing some time into these anyway. A really important hint for this is that on Wednesday the 3rd of April, you should collect all the daily crafting Ritz from the boards, but do not hand them in yet. So you can actually hand in double the Ritz on Thursday and receive up to 280 boxes on the first day within like an hour or a bit more of daily Ritz. Next off, due to the changes with more sources of boxes, you can simply farm dormants in, for example, a liquor, not only getting a box every three minutes, but as well leveling a new character or champion point smoothly and having further chance on the Staff of Worms replica style. I think this will be a common method to farm boxes easily and smartly. As well, any daily quests and DLC areas where you will have to kill uh, world bosses will be very popular for example in Rothgar or the Reach, as those will not only give you a box by handing in the quest as last year, but as well when you actually kill the world boss. Lastly, PvP and Zero Dill for daily quest box rewards and battlegrounds will be nice for some additional boxes too. If you are not too much into farming, you can simply just keep doing uh, the game normally and enjoy passively some additional boxes while just doing your normal content, for example by doing any dungeons or pledges, world bosses or trials. So now let's lastly talk in more depth uh, what the boxes do actually drop, if they are actually worth farming, how the market will react and what you can already prepare for. First off, the boxes are worth farming. Sure, not everyone will drop you great worth, but we know from the last years that they can contain a lot of great worthy stuff. First of all, they have the chance to drop crafting motifs of almost all kind. Here is a list of the firms from last year's event, which sadly didn't, go, uh, didn't get fully updated yet though. But basically all motifs can drop besides of the basic motifs, the event motifs as for example Holojack or Dramora motifs, Crown Store motifs as well as Ancestral and Ancient motifs, which you need to get the leads from uh, treasure maps, and often the very newest motifs aren't included yet. As well, with an extremely low chance, uh, the full gold box of these motifs can drop from the boxes, being worth several millions easily. Warm cold motifs will drop again too. This will lead to a complete crash of the motif market, so if you, if you have any motifs around still, sell them now before the market will be flooded during the event. Anyhow, there's a big opportunity on selling the Ancestral and the Ancient motifs. So, um, from last year's experience, it is expectable that many, many players will use the chance of buying a lot of motifs for the collections, leading to an increased amount too, but not more supply of the Ancient and Ancestral motifs. So I expect Ancestral Akaviri, Ancestral Breton, Ancestral Reach, and Ancient Daedric motifs to get a lot, lot, lot more expensive, 
That's why I'm prepared and have already a lot of these motifs stacked up to sell them during the event. Getting your hands on cheaper treasure maps for these motifs might be great income dur during the event. The normal uh, Ancestral Nord, uh, Ancestral Organ, Ancestral High Elf motifs uh, are a bit flooded in the market. Um, I think they will still receive uh, a lot higher demand too, so it might be good to have some of those in the back too. Same goes for event motifs, even though from my experience those do not spike a lot, as most players already have them. Maybe very new motifs might become more pricey too, as for example Kindred's Concord, uh, depending if they will be included in the loot table or not. Next off, the, there will be uh, etheric ciphers um, dropping in the event boxes um, with a very small chance. As main ingredient for the mythical Ambrosia recipes, they are worth many millions. So I expect the recipes to drop a lot in price too, as many of those will simply drop over the time. Same goes to ethereal dust, which will drop more commonly than the ciphers, and are needed as main ingredient for the mythical ambrosia potions. Even though there will be a lot more demand due to the XP event, these will drop a huge uh, lot in price. The boxes will as well drop single things like perfect row, neuron cruxes, uh, or even like normal gold materials like drawerworks, which will all see like maybe teeny tiny uh, price decreases, not as hard as above mentioned motifs and ethereal dust though. Interestingly, alchemy, alchemy materials, as for example um, dragon blood or dragon room, uh, drop in potions of 20 each. So this will lead to huge price decreases, uh, at least from those materials. Other alchemy materials, which are worth less gold, won't be affected that much. As well, there will be many style materials from the motifs possible, dropping too. Old style pages like Saisahan or Abnathan might as well sell decently well during the event, again, as people will want to collect everything, so it might be a good chance to sell them if you still have some. So I think I covered most of what is important for the event, uh, just to make sure. I'm working here on PTS, uh, last year's information and experience, so some things can still be different from what I've told when the event launches. Even though I don't believe that there will be big changes with, for example, the loot table of the boxes come. But let's see that on the 4th April then. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, that would be really much appreciated. See you soon in Tumblr then.